confusion in court as two lawyers appear for Rivers Assembly in suit against Fubara. Hello viewers and welcome to InfoGIS TV. There was a confusion in Federal High Court in Abuja on Wednesday as two councils announced an appearance for Rivers House of Assembly in a suit seeking an order shutting down expenditures of this River State government, all of its expenditure. The news agency of Nigeria reports that the Rivers Assembly led by Martins Amewili had filed a suit before Justice Emeka Nwite to restrain Governor Simi Lai Fubara of River State from having access to the state's fund until he represents the appropriation law for the 2024 financial year before the House. In the originating summons dated July 14th but filed July 15th by their led counsel Joseph Dauda, S.A. and the River State House of Assembly and Right Honorable Mehule are first and second plaintiffs. They, however, sued the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Zenith Bank, PLC, Access Bank, PLC, Accountant General of the Federation, Governor of River State, Fubara, and Accountant General of River State as first to seize defendants, respectively. Others include the River State Independent Electoral Commission, the Chief Judge of River State Honorable Justice S.C. Amadi and Chairman of River State Independent Electoral Commission Honorable Justice Adolphus Enabili Retired and Government of River State as a seventh to tenth defendant respectively. The plaintiff sought an order of interlocutory injunction restraining the CBN, Senate Bank and Assets Bank including the Attorney General of the Federation from honoring any request or financial instructions issued by Fubara for Revenue of, of River State or River State Government in their custody for the benefit of River State or River State Government. It was reported that Justice Mitty had on July 17th refused to grant the plaintiff's ex parte motion moved by Sebastian Honorable SAN for the suspension of the state's expenditures pending the hearing and the admission of the substantive suit. The judge instead ordered the plaintiffs to put all the defendants in the suit on notice and adjourned until August 7th for a hearing. However, when the matter was called on Wednesday and the first and second plaintiffs' counsel, Mr. Honorable, announced his appearance, another lawyer, Samir Sonieri SAN, stood up to also announce his representation for the first plaintiff, which is River State Assembly. Suniari so said, pursuant to a notice of change of counsel filed on August 5th, he was in court to represent the House of Assembly and also to appear for the applicant, Right Honorable Victor Kujumbu, seeking to be joined as co-plaintiff pursuant to the motion filed on August 6th. He said another motion on notice was filed on August 6th, seeking an order striking out the name of the Assembly from the originating summons. It was observed that in the three motions filed, Sunyari argued that an originating summons was filed on the House of Assembly's behalf without any authorization. Take notice that the first plaintiff hearing has changed their counsel. J.B. Dauda SCN or J.B. Dauda and Co. are now briefed S.A. Sumiari SCN, M.C.I. A.R.B. U.K. of Samia Sumiari and Associates for the purposes of legal representation in this suit. The notice of change of counsel re reads, also in a motion seeking an order joining Jumbo in the case, Sumiari argued that Ami Huli filed the suit without the leave and authority of the assembly. The lawyer submitted that Jumbo is the incumbent speaker of the 10th Rivers Assembly and statutory head of the arm of government. He said he was elected on May 8 following the resignation of the former speaker Edison Ehe. So Mary said on December 11, 2023, Amehule, who was elected to represent his constituency at Rivers Assembly on the platform of PDP, publicly announced his defection to the APC without any lawful justification alongside several former members of the House. He said following the said unconstitutional cross captain of Amehule and others, their legislative seats were declared vacant on December 13, 2023 by the former Speaker, thereby leading to the cessation of their membership of River State House of Assembly. The second plaintiff, who is no longer the Speaker of the House of Assembly, cannot institute an action in that capacity, capacity he said, among other grounds. Another lawyer, Collins D.K., equally announced his appearance for Obiakbo, local government council of River State, as the party seeking to be joined as the 11th defendant in the matter. When Honorable stood up to make his submissions on the issue of change of counsel, Sonyari objected, urging the court to direct Honorable to file a formal application if he had a contrary view. If he has any query on the motion for change of counsel, he can put it in writing in accordance with section 6 sub 5 sub c, he said. But Honorable insisted that based on the Supreme Court decision in Modu Sheriff against PDP, the court could not could take his argument on or orally without filing a counter affidavit citing section 36 sub 1 of the constitution. We are here and representing a faction of the House of Assembly that is recognized by law, he said. Jagogo Ibaru and who appeared for government Fubara, Governor Fubara, argued that Honorable could not have been heard when there were motions for joinder. Ibaru argued that Order 9, Sub 16 of the Federal High Court of River State prescribed that issues of joinder had to be settled before the court proceeds in the matter. The CBN lawyer, S.T. Ologonorisa, S.A.N., also disagreed with Honorable on his submissions. 
Ologo Norisa said the issues of the plaintiffs and counsel in this case must be decided first so that he would know who he is responding to. To the ADSA who appeared for River State Attorney General assist defendant aligned himself with the submissions of Ologo Norisa. We need to know who brought us to court first. That has to be sorted out first in this kind of situation because we have a, an avalanche of papers to deal with, he said. Isaac Ita, who said he appeared in protest on behalf of the 10 defendant reversed government, argued that the Gold Court had no jurisdiction to hear the matter being a vacation court. Citing order 46 of 5 of the Federal High Court rules, he said besides that the matter was not filed during vacation, there was no urgency that would have warranted hearing the suit during the vacation. But Justice Mita informed that he was directed by the Chief Judge Justice John Shoho to hear the matter as a vacation judge. My Lena CJ gave me the order to continue this matter during vacation. Can I show you the authority given to me by my Lena CJ to continue this matter on vacation, George? He asked. As a vacation judge, he asked. Honorable Jeff argued that the Chief Judge has the administrative power portion to Federal High Court Act to give the directive. The judge said, looking at the contentions of the parties, there were some issues that needed to be resolved before proceedings. Honorable then sought for a 10-minute stand down to allow him to consult with his team of lawyers, and the application was granted. After the court reconveyed, Honorable applied for an adjournment to enable him to respond to all the motions filed. The lawyer also applied for an abridgment of time within which the parties could file and respond to processes in the suit. Justice Mitty, who adjourned the matter until August 30th for hearing the motion, ordered parties to file and respond to processes within seven days of receipt of court documents. Tope Demekun, a lawyer and human rights activist, has strongly denounced the government's move to arm security agencies with court orders to suppress peaceful protests. Tope described this development as a dangerous precedent, emphasizing that it is ill-conceived and will not withstand scrutiny. In a statement released, the Mokung Tope reminded authorities that court orders cannot silence the cries of a hungry and desperate people. He criticized the government's new policy of seeking court orders to justify clamping down on peaceful protests, inviting military chiefs to enforce these orders and using violence to quell dissenting voices. Tope lamented that while young Nigerians are fighting for a better future, the government is squandering resources on suppressing their voices instead of addressing the pressing issues of hunger and deprivations. The statement reads in part, in a bid to stop the organized hunger protests of August 1st to August 10th in Abuja, the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Yeson Wiki, approached the High Court of Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, on the 31st of, of, of July 2024 against Omoye Lesoware and four other activists, potentially protesters or leaders of organizing groups. He now listed the Inspector General of Police, the Commissioner of Police, Federal Capital Territory Command, the Director General of the Department of State Security Services, Commandant General, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, who was listed as Director General instead of Commandant General, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief Air Staff and the Chief of Naval Staff as assist to the 12th Defendants. The statement said, many states of the Federation like Ogun, Lagos, and others no doubt saw the genius initiatives of Enwike and have also activated the Attorney Generals to approach the state courts to restrict protesters to specific places 